Welcome back. So this is the second video in a series all about taking measurements of your speakers so we can add them to Subaligner. If you didn't watch the first video yet, please go back and watch that because that'll explain everything that we're doing. So how do you set up Room EQ Wizard to take measurements for Subaligner? So because this is a series of videos for, I expect, people who maybe have never used an audio analyzer before and may not use one again after this, I feel like the easiest place to start is with Room EQ Wizard. Uh, it's free, you can download it easily, get it set up easily, and you'll see, you'll take your first measurement today, and then you'll feel like a wizard. So uh, the two main things today we're gonna talk about are just audio interface settings and the REW preferences, uh, and then we'll take a measurement of a microphone cable here. So there are lots of different ways to get audio in and out of your computer. Um, my biggest suggestion is just to use something simple. A simple two-channel audio interface is all you need to make this happen. Um, I've worked with people that try to use their consoles, their X32 or whatever, and that's fine as long as you can figure out how to do the routing. So if you have some special circumstance that you want me to do a video about, please just comment on this video and we'll see where it goes, see if I can help. Um, and if you have any questions about what we're doing, please check the comments on this video because I want to keep this conversation going there. I know what I'm going to show you today may not be what you have and you may run into problems. So we'll figure it out together. So I'll be demoing today with this uh, really simple eight channel audio interface, uh, Evo 8. And I'm going to show you exactly how I want you to connect it. So here in the back, there are four outputs and four inputs. And I'm just going to connect, make one-to-one -one connections basically. So I'm gonna make connect from output one to input one. And I guess I should turn it upside down so I can get the other connector in there. And then I have another TRS cable. Um, do you have to use TRS cables? No, you just use whatever is available to you, but it's pretty common on these kind of small audio interfaces that the outputs are TRS. So there we go. All I did was connect output one to input one, and output two to input two. Um, the next thing is just the software interface. This is also going to be different for everybody, but I notice um, some things that commonly go wrong are as soon as you connect your audio interface, a lot of times the operating system will just take over. So here, for example, uh, it might have immediately switched over here, or sometimes this is here, but the volume is turned way down. This, and it, it gets, it's pretty obvious here, but sometimes it's not so obvious. So what I like to do is switch over to that audio interface and just make sure that the volume is all the way up and then go put my computer back on whatever its default settings are. So it's not interacting with the audio interface anymore. And then use the controls that may become built in with your audio interface. Um, here, there's not many controls. I can't, I think from here, I can't even set the sampling rate, which is great. Less controls is better. But what I want to do is basically normalize all this stuff. So I don't want any inputs being sent to any outputs that I, where I don't know what's going on. So I'll turn all this stuff down, turn the gains all down. And um, we'll leave this output up because I'm sending output one, two back to inputs one and two. And I think I have pretty much all the default settings because I did a fresh install recently. And if I head over here to preferences, then that's the first place where we're going to start. So sampling rate of 48 kilohertz is fine probably don't go lower than that. Um, default device, this is what would be selected up here, I believe. So we want to make these things explicit. So here I'm going to select my audio interface for both the inputs and the outputs. And then on many things, almost everything, 90% of all the settings here, I'll just leave as their default. Um, I kind of hate the way that outputs are labeled in REW. So if you click on this button, you can make them whatever you want. So this says hardware channel one. So 
I would love this to be one. And maybe if I just choose hardware channel, does that make them all what I want? There we go. Cool. Okay. So output speaker, I don't know what that means, but they're going out of output one and two, and that's what I want. And then I'm using inputs one and two. Notice that I'm using input one for my microphone and input two for my loopback. So in almost every audio analyzer, you have this concept of a microphone input and a reference input, two things that the audio analyzer will then use to create the transfer function for you. Okay, pretty much everything else is going to stay the same. I don't need to worry about this right now. So now I'm going to go to check levels. And this is where we need to start being careful because we don't want any of these outputs accidentally connected to an amp or a speaker and turned up really loud, could possibly damage something. Um, so just be careful with this stuff. So I'm going to hit check levels. This uh, has a nice explanation here that you should read. And when I hit next, I expect to see some output some meters here and I see here that it's uh, outputting 20 dB as it said it would right over here 20 dB and but my inputs don't match oh they do match but not perfectly and uh, they don't match this so um, these are very simplified instruction videos I have much more detailed videos over on the Tracebook website if you're really into audio analyzers. But for today, we're just going to make this really simple and we're just going to try to make all of these numbers match. So I'll head over here and I'll just start playing around with these until I can get, I'll adjust the gains of my inputs until these numbers also say 20. So I'm going to do this over here. And just slowly start turning these up. And I'm looking at those numbers in the bottom. Okay, that's probably as close as I can get it. It's good enough. So they all say 20, and that is the end of the check levels test. And that's it. You can look through some of these other settings if you want, but I think the default settings for everything should be fine. And now we're ready to take our first measurement. So when you hit measure, it's going to say, hey, it's not calibrated. Don't worry about that. Um, so always type something descriptive in here. So I'm doing microphone cable test, and it's going to add the date and time after that. Just good to kind of understand these things. Super helpful. This is my favorite thing about this audio analyzer, <laughs> is that you can put notes in as you're taking the measurement. Um, this is really helpful because for these measurements, once we actually get into taking uh, measurements of speakers, I'm going to need some to know some very specific things like uh, what is the speaker brand model DSP preset and the distance from the microphone. So you can write those things in here. You can also write them into the title. Um, I see people that change these numbers. Don't change these numbers. Just always leave it set at the, the maximums basically. So this should be uh, at either zero or one and then uh, this should be at the Nyquist frequency. Right, so if we're measuring at 48K, then this should be 24. Um, this should be at a safe level. It doesn't really matter for now, but we can talk about that when we start talking about um, measuring speakers in the next video. And then the rest of the default settings should be fine, but I'll just go over them. So 256, one repetition, use loopback as timing reference, timing offset should be at zero, uh, everything, a lot of this stuff came from the preferences we just set. So 48 kilohertz, single measurement. Um, these are our outputs. And then we choose our reference output and our reference input. All this stuff is already set. And all of these defaults should be good. Now we can hit check levels and we should just see a um, negative 20 dB signal over here. And we should just see a little message here that says, hey, everything's okay. And now we can hit start. Very nice. So you should see a nice, beautiful, perfectly flat line. And that's what we get here. Don't want to worry about these tiny minor deviations uh, near the, you know, bottoms and tops of the spectrum. If you scroll up here, you'll see it fall off and, you know, the phase trace kind of. So you could create a calibration file to 
um, remove some of those if you wanted, but this is good enough, right? For us, this is great. Um, one helpful thing to check is that your phase trace here should be at zero degrees. Maybe a quick overview of this graph. So this side over here, you can see it says SPL and you can change what that is right here if you want. But um, basically on the left side of the left y-axis is magnitude, on the right y-axis is phase. And I used to hate this and I'm like, why aren't, why is it on a single graph? Why aren't there two graphs? This is actually a lot more common. So if you get used to looking at this kind of graph, then you will be comfortable with a lot of audio analyzers and how they display information out there. Okay, so you can see numbers over here. Uh, so, you know, we've got this line here and if we put our little tracker here, we can see that it's at 96.58 uh, dB SPL. Over on the right side here, we can see we have different numbers. This is phase, so you can see it says here degrees. And um, you should play around with these a little bit because getting kind of comfortable with this display can be really helpful. You know, if you're only going to use it a few times for measurements for subaligner, don't worry about it too much. But just uh, explaining a little bit about what's going on with this graph. And then across the bottom here, uh, you have your x-axis with frequency. The other helpful thing might be to look at this impulse response. And when you first look at this, it might be zoomed out. So just, you know, play around with these zoom controls. And so you kind of get a handle of that. When you're just measuring something like a microphone cable, you want to see peak up, right? The very first peak here should be up and you can go through and test all of your microphone cables. In fact, before you get started with taking measurements for speakers, you should test all your microphone cables. And that's what I do every time I go to measure speakers for a tracebook or subaligner. The first thing I do is test on my cables because you never want to get into a situation later where somebody says, hey, my measurement doesn't look like yours, or hey, these two measurements don't match, or, you know, some question. If you measure all your cables and they all look good, then there's never any question because you can say, hey, I verified all my cables. So if there's something here, then it's not the cable, something else going on. So I've made it look really easy to get started here because I've done this a bunch of times, setting up computers, audio interfaces, audio analyzers. Um, but it's going to take you a little bit longer if this is your very first time. Um, so just go slow, take it easy, and, you know, with each step, verify that you have the right connections, everything looks like it's working correctly, and if you have trouble, comment on this video or send me an email, and then I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.